Jen Rick, this is a very busy part of eastern St. Joseph County. You can see the football lights behind me at Penn High School, the intersection of Bittersweet and McKinley. And then right over here is where police found a body just under four hours ago. When you're driving along Jefferson, you may have noticed and it may feel a little bit like a free for all. So we wanted to know. Is it two lanes or is it four? You might have thought all that rain that we got in June might have hurt business here in St. Joe, but that's not at all what happened at Scooter Joe's. Doctors say a rise in nearsightedness could be from something that's all around us, technology. Turns out that 100 bucks you thought was going to the recipient isn't. Five bucks is going to GoFundMe. Another three is going to the company that manages the money. Turns out that 100 bucks you donated is down to 92. But is it safe? Just take a look at this. The water from this creek is all the way over here, more than 100 feet away. This road is still closed days after all the rain came through. From those meetings, a lot of people in the community said they don't even know where the cemetery is. It's one of the best hidden gems of South Bend. New details in a story WSBT 22 first brought you at 5. This man, 22-year-old Armon Tobar, is charged with murder after he allegedly admitted to police he was paid to kill Francisco Guzman. It happened almost one year ago on Huron Street in South Bend. And tonight, Guzman's family is starting to find closure. Every day, the Guzman family is reminded. And a bullet came, see, and it came over here. There's two two shots here. There's one here, another one here, and another one that went here. Of the bullet holes that killed their son Francisco. He was gunned down in August 2014 after at least a dozen bullets ricocheted around Josefina Guzman's home, killing her 22 year old. Every day I have to cry. I have to deal with I see my son walking in no more. Almost exactly one year later, 21-year-old Armon Tobar was charged with the murder of her son. Police say he and another man were paid to kill him. It definitely feels, it just feels like now that they found who did it, it, it seems like we kind of are living the whole thing all over again. Tobar admitted to police he shot at least 12 bullets at Guzman. Then he and another man split the money for killing him. But family members say they want to know who is responsible for wanting him killed. Eventually what happens in the dark is going to come out to the light. While the wounds continue to heal. And still those memories, um, still I have to see every, every day I have to see the shot that, um, the shots that killed my son. This isn't the first death for the Guzman family. Another one of their sons died when he was 16. They ask anyone who knows anything about the death of their son to contact police. And as this bear is gaining quite the reputation, Leanne, for the past month, he's been hopscotching around Michigan and northern Indiana. Today, I talked with the homeowner who first thought it was a raccoon, but when he shined his flashlight and saw two big eyes staring at him, he knew exactly what it was. <laughs> Dave Marciniak's alarm clock. And then he was hitting the door. Yeah, like that, and I, was, I wasn't going to open it. Was a little bit louder than normal. When I got the flashlight, came to the porch, shined it out here, saw a pair of eyes, saw that was down. But again, I, I couldn't see the bear because it was so black and dark. But he soon met a pair of eyes staring right back at him. And so he was right up here. And then I kept beating the bottom of the window saying, uh, you know, get out of here and stuff like that. And he just calmly looked up and, and just, and then he put his paw on her. That's really scared me. A bear, he thinks six feet tall when standing, had a little fun on his porch, knocking over these 40 pound penguins, ripping apart his screen and tearing down his Christmas lights. He was very loud and he hit against the doors. And he was uh, testing, like, checking the place out. This isn't the first time this mysterious bear has been hanging in this neck of the woods. And neighbors like Dorothy Schaff are scared. It is peaceful most of the time, except when something like this happens. The bear started his journey in Muskegon about a month ago, then traveled to Holland and all the way to South Bend and then west to New Carlisle. Then the bear, who's believed to be two years old, landed in Michigan City. Bears have a very strong sense of smell. Officers believe the bear is living off people who are leaving food and is stuck somewhere between Michigan City and nearby major highways. They get kicked out of the den, so mom says go find somewhere else to live. 
and we think that's kind of what he's trying to do. Even though Marciniak has to restring his Christmas lights and pick up his penguins, we want to get him back north. He just wants the bear to find his way back home. Just today, the DNR announced they set a trap for the bear. They plan to relocate the bear to an area in Michigan where several other bears are living. A spokesman tells me the trap will not hurt the bear, and they plan to move the little guy because it's not only safe for him, but for all of us. We've got more information on our website about what you need to know to stay safe. In the studio, Suzanne Spencer, WSBT 22 News. <laughs> <laughs> a typical spring day isn't for Jim Hansen. You're going to lose your sense of humor before the day's over. Today I'm going to lose it? Yep. Having to put up with me? <laughs> <laughs> Known for his spunk. It's that little lady right there that gets me in all sorts of trouble. For more than 50 years, Karen and Jim have been each other's rock. But now Jim has months to live. And there's nothing more they can do with him or for him. That's where Anya comes in. He's a special guy. <laughs> yeah, she just, she's trying to make me feel good now. He's a man of a lot of wisdom, a lot of friends. For the past year, she's been his caretaker while in hospice, and she's a civilian volunteer for the Coast Guard. I like to work with people to get their bucket list filled up. Including trying to get Jim on a Coast Guard cutter, but to do that, he has to be a civilian member too. When we took him on for hospice, they asked him about his bucket list and that was one of the things that he had said. But every civilian member has to get fingerprints. But because of his COPD and failing liver, he can't leave the house. Oh, that card. So, right thumb. They came to him. It's just celebration knowing that something that he's been wanting to do becomes a reality rather than just wishing. And his spirit couldn't be any higher. Well, I got to say there's a whole lot of love in there, so that's what I got to say. Suzanne Spencer, WSBT 22 News. WSBT 22 News at 11. Good evening, I'm Suzanne Spencer. Rick has the night off. New at 11, keeping cool in all of this heat. The Elkhart County Fairgrounds were packed with people today. James just told us how to keep cool at the fair this week. I'm joined now by WSBT 22 meteorologist Ed Russo. Can we expect these warm temperatures to stick around? Well, we saw the last of the real heat today, and it wasn't as bad as it was a couple weeks ago with the heat of New details continue to emerge in a deadly South Bend home invasion. 45-year-old Curtis Trent died from a bullet wound after allegedly breaking into a home on Corby Boulevard. The homeowner was injured but survived. Tonight, we're learning more about the man who died in that break-in. New at 11, Many roads in Niles Township are in pretty bad shape, you've probably noticed. But should people who live in the area pay more to fix them? That's what voters will have to decide next week. WSBT 22's James Fulmore is here. South Bend Animal Care and Control is investigating a disturbing case of cat abuse tonight. Neighbors say a group of boys tortured a cat, allegedly setting it on fire and beating it to death with a brick. Tonight, only on WSBT 22, we're hearing from the girls who were taking care of this cat before it was allegedly tortured and killed. 